Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. Let's do a big honey production inspection. We have a single brood nest. We have an excluder here on both of these colonies. And we have some comb honey supers. I'm hoping that they've really started on the second box. I know one of the boxes they were pretty committed to. And we've got some regular drawn honey supers right here. We have bees all the way up to the top. I'm just gonna pull one frame out of this top box and see how things are going. We are at the end of May. It is the 27th or 28th. It's one of those days, I think. Or are we in one of those days? We're close. All right, I'm going to have to pull this apart. They have put bee glue and wax all over the place. But boy, that looks good. Oh, yeah. So they built a little bit of bridge comb right there. Over here, you can definitely see that they have put a lot of cappings on this is totally ready to harvest this is wet cappings and for those who often ask why haven't we harvested this yet and brought it back out to our bees to refill we don't have that long of a flow and in our area of tennessee if we can get eight to ten weeks of good flow that's as long as we can get so if we were going to do that maybe we could have pulled one of the early ones off but we're, we're busy we're making queens we're making nukes we're doing a lot of different things like that so we just load these things up with supers and let them go to town. We extract it all at once. The honey has been darker this year. Laurel and I were just looking at a hive and commenting on that. We had to scrape a little bit of burr comb they made up on top and fill with honey. And we, uh, we fed it back to the bees. Um, but it, it was really amber looking. I think the tulip poplar had a really good year. And, and the clover so far has not done a whole lot. Don't be like that bee. I'm just wanting to check out what you got and maybe take it. Um, all right. Oh, goodness. This box has got a little bit of weight. Oh, yeah. This one's full. So I've got a lid over here, and I'm just going to drop these things down. We're just going to keep going till we get to those comb honey supers. And then let's check out the brood nest and see if they're wanting to swarm. I might need to add a box of foundation and see if I can get them to draw that. I don't think there's enough honey flow to get another super, but I would love it if they started another box. This one's not all the way full yet. I'd say that one's about 75% full, gauging the weight. This one, the way it popped, it sounded lighter. Yeah, it is a little bit lighter. So they've still got some room in those two boxes and they should have some room down in here to draw some combs. Maybe. Let's see what's going on. So this is the Comb Honey Supers. I want to say a big thanks to Gus Mitchell, who's uh, one of my beekeeping buddies, and he has some YouTube videos on doing this. I want to leave a link down below for his channel. He doesn't make a ton of videos, but he has some really good ones and does a great job in Arkansas and uh, outside of Memphis producing a lot of honey. Hey, 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 look at this. Oh, man. Gus, I appreciate it, buddy. That is great. That's nice dry cappings. This is an outer frame and I remember coming in here a few weeks ago taking some of the ones that were better drawn in the center, moving them towards the outer edge so they could focus on the ones they hadn't done as much work on. So this is one of the ones they focused on first and that looks excellent. This is going to make some great comb honey right here and it has started with some starter strips. Like I said, I'm going to leave a link down below if you want to watch some of Gus's videos. Um, he's got some good information. This frame was made uh, by Skipper uh, Luttrell. He was at the Hive Life Conference, and uh, he makes these frames specifically for comb honey production. This is a shallow frame, so it's a little bit thinner, but that way uh, it works better for comb honey. We'll show you more in the future. So I'm going to put this back in, try not to damage it. That one makes me want to enter a honey show with some comb honey, but uh, I just don't think that uh, it's probably a good idea to enter in my own show uh, Myra might come after me after that and get me. There you go, Laurel. There's a little smoke. Follows beauty, right? Bees were starting to look at the uh, the dead cat on the microphone, and they don't like the texture of all that artificial hair. And a lot of times they, they like to go after it. Textures will get them. Smells and textures. They do not like it. All right, so let's go for some of these inner frames that we moved from the outer spaces. Okay, this one's still pretty light. There's not hardly anything up in here. You can see there's the original strip. I got this from 
uh, Kelly's and Clarkson. Um, just the uh, very, very thin comb honey strips. And they're made to go the whole length, but I just cut them to an inch and wax them in with our own wax. You can see how dark that honey is right there. They're bringing in that, that amber honey. Laurel keeps getting in the shade, uh, getting you in the shade. All right, check it out there maybe a little bit more. It's still delicious. Okay, so I'm gonna throw this one back in. And it looks like there's a little bit of room in the center. So hopefully they'll get that filled out. Looks like we still have three or four that need to be filled up. Interesting. Bees really do prefer the center frames. So here's one that's not all the way to the edge. And it's they still got some work to do. They've got the top part pretty good. One of the things that you'll notice is they've drawn a lot of this into drone comb. And where the foundation is up top, it's more worker sized and then they draw this into drone. It doesn't really matter for comb honey at all. What's nice is that all of this from here on down is their foundation and it is the best for eating because it's so thin, uh, it just doesn't taste waxy and you don't want your customers getting honey in their mouths with a lot of wax too, um, especially if it's really thick. So that's why it's mostly foundationless, just a little bit of, of starter strip. All right, let's go on down. Excuse me. Oh, goodness. You're really not supposed to stack them in the entrance like this. Look at all these bees we have trying to get in. Usually I stack them behind me. I wasn't thinking today. Oh, it's got some good weight, good weight. So let's see what they're doing in this one right here. It's looking like they might be drawing that one out a little bit too far. That one as in this one and this one. This edge comb I moved out. I did the same thing to this box. That looks really good right there. That's ready to harvest it looks like. Try not to damage it. But then th these in the center. Yeah, they haven't put a whole lot down in here either. So we still got some clover and some sumac. I'm hoping we can get a little bit of action down into these frames and maybe get them filled up. We'll see what happens. It'd be awesome if I could get, even just get 10 frames, that would be great. And you know, I don't know where I'm gonna sell it, honestly. I don't have a market set up for this. I just wanted to try it out. I've never produced comb honey before. This is my first year, 21 years beekeeping, first year going after comb honey. And uh, I'm really anxious to try it myself. It's, a, I think, a cool part of beekeeping that uh, maybe should be done a little bit more often. I, that's my grandpa's favorite way to have it. All right, let's check the brood nest, though. Let's be real quick. We don't have to do a whole lot here. Yeah, that box is definitely a lot lighter than that other one. So we have our queen excluder to make sure she doesn't get up and lay in all those nice combs. And let's see what she is doing down in here. She's got to be a good queen, as busy as they have been this year with all that honey in the supers. And yeah, that answers the question right there. That is a great brood pattern. She's a bricklayer, that's what we call them. And it's emerging out on this end and looks like she's starting to deposit some eggs. I don't see her right off. I'm going to lay that right here. The main thing I wanna see is, is there any swarm cells? Typically, once they've committed like this and they've really done a good job of putting that honey above the excluder, you're not gonna see a lot of honey down in here. You're just gonna see brood and bee bread and oh come on there we go there we go and uh, so there's just they do a really good job clearing the brood nest essentially 
and making room for the queen. So there's more capped brood right there. Looks pretty good. Drop this down below. Not seeing any signs of swarming. Honestly, we're just gonna grab one more frame, then we're gonna do something, which is all you really needed to do before. Maybe check a frame, check underneath. So she's got some brood going over here, bee bread. Again, not a lot of honey. So if you take all the honey off of here, you have to feed them. That's one of the problems with single brood management. You get more honey, but you also have to do a lot more feeding. So a lot of bee bread. I'm seeing good patterns. And she is laying, laying, laying. I don't see any signs of swarming. Let's check down below real quick. Give them a little bit of smoke. Okay. And now we are going to smoke them up. And we are just going to check down here for swarm cells. And a big colony like this, if they're wanting to swarm, you'll be able to see cells being developed on the bottom. That's where the majority of them are. And there's some, you know, little bitty cups here and there, you know, dry cups. That's not a problem. Here's a cup down in here. There's nothing in it. It's just dry. They keep a few of those around. This hive's not wanting to swarm at all. So, good bit of bees here. A lot of them are still out in the field. The sumac trees are blooming and the nectar is pouring on in. Hopefully the sumac will give us a really good crop again this year. Anyway, so this hive is super exciting. I'm hoping we can just get about another 10 to 14 days of honey flow, get more of these uh, comb supers filled up, and I hope we have a lot more to share with you on, on the comb honey, and I can't wait to try it out. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something, and we'll see you in the next one.